Look around, you'll see crazy stuff. I just was in Vegas. You ever been to Vegas? Oh, yeah. yeah, not that Vegas. I'm talking <laughs> the perimeter of Vegas. Have you ever seen that? I saw a pimp on a bicycle. <laughs> Puffy on a huffy, okay? Like, um, he didn't even have bling bling. He just had ching ching, ching ching. I heard him go, get in the basket, ho. Come on. <laughs> one in the basket, one on the nanner seat. Let's roll. I was fascinated by this guy. I was actually fascinated by the prostitute he was with. Did you ever see something? It, really, I would. Like, did you ever see something that you can't get your eyes off of? I could not stop thinking about this prostitute because she didn't have any teeth. And not for any sick sexual reason. I'm not that kind of comic. That's you and your disgusting heads. That's you. You need therapy. I was fascinated because as a woman, if you are truly honest with yourself, there are times in your life when you don't like what you look like, right? You don't want to leave the house. Because maybe your hair came out wrong, your makeup's bad, you feel chubby. So I wish I had the confidence of a no-tooth hooker. <laughs> right there. Anybody who can sell for a living with no chiclet? Holy shit. You find it funny, it's happening. That's why I wanted to come to Boston, because you guys, you were Boston strong long before any problems, right? Yeah. Please. It's a wrong city to mess with. Even the commercials are tough here in Boston. Hey, come on down to Mikey's used cars. Or don't you, we don't care. Really. <laughs> Keep your money, okay? <laughs> Too much fun. You know what, you're fun in, a, in like a good way. People are so ridiculously stupid now, they don't have a sense of humor. That's why I'm excited they're gonna make the station wagon again. <laughs> right, because that's when this country had a sense of humor. <laughs> Not only is a car with basement paneling, hilarious. <laughs> like, is that a vehicle? Is it a forest? What the f is passing me? I don't know what that is. If you were a kid who had to sit in the very back seat of that station wagon, that seat that faced the oncoming traffic, <laughs> right away you knew you were the disposable child. This was the hierarchy of the 70s. Because your parents knew at any moment that death trap back door might just swing open. <laughs> and your little ass would just roll right out. <laughs> they wouldn't even pull over to get you. They didn't even love you that much. They'd just slow the car down, roll down the other way, get <laughs> back in this car. And you'd have to apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a different time. If you had that station wagon, it was really the best as a kid because your parents couldn't see you, so you could do whatever the you wanted. You would pretend to be kidnapped in the back seat. No one cared. <laughs> You'd be in the back. Hey, <laughs> 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 you know, people had a sense of humor back then because what the other drivers do? Nothing. <laughs> That's it, nothing. Maybe honk the horn, make a face at your parents. Yeah, yeah. Nowadays, let's see if people have a sense of humor. Tomorrow, when you're not doing anything, see if you got a kid. Make them pretend to be kidnapped in the back seat of your car, <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> Please, there'd be choppers and flares and Nancy Grace at the exit. <laughs> I love Nancy Grace. I do, I, I love her. I wish I was her friend, because she needs a friend. <laughs> no, she does, she really does, because if she had, she has no good girlfriends. I know she has no good girlfriends. You know how I know? Because I'm a good girlfriend. And I know that she has no good girlfriends, because if she had one good female friend, they'd tell her, you shouldn't wear that little baby barrette right here. No one's gonna take you seriously <laughs> as an attorney, really. It's not gonna work out with the butterfly right there. It's purple and plastic, please. <laughs> take it off. I'm a good friend. I'm a 3 a.m. friend. You call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, boom, I'm there, if, if I catch the phone. <laughs> well, no, I, you gotta have friends. Friends are important. Get a dumb friend, that's wonderful. The quality of your life will skyrocket. Because no matter how bad your day is, you call up that you feel so much better by yourself. <laughs> I got a cousin, she's not just dumb, she's dumb. You just look at her and you go, damn. 
you're dumb. It's not that people are dumber than they used to be. It's just that now we let them out of the house. That's all it is. In the old days, their families used to cover for them. Don't you remember? Like there was always one kid in every neighborhood you weren't allowed to play with. Remember in the summertime, he'd be behind the screen door in his underwear and cowboy boots. <laughs> Eating a fudge call. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play. Pick me, pick me! Now he's your friend on Facebook. <laughs> You know you don't even like those people. You just want to be popular. I don't even like half the people I know, and Facebook's just a place for desperate women to find the hot kid from the slow class. <laughs> like, at least somebody remembers me when I was pure. <laughs> the internet used to be the information superhighway. Now it's just one more place where you gotta duck a friend. Right? Because we all have that one friend that will forward you every email they have ever received. Thought you would like this. You open up, it's like an Amish guy taking a d in the woods. <laughs> what the is wrong with you? You think I would like that? Now I gotta forward it to 11 other people for good luck. Because <laughs> you know you try to delete it, right? Like you do and you go, Wait a minute, what if the dancing troll really does grant my fondest wish <laughs> at 11-11? Then you gotta find 10 other <laughs> to send it to, it's a whole procedure. <laughs> find the funny. By the way, if I offend any of you tonight by anything I say, good. <laughs> you probably needed to hear it. <laughs> you know? And I'm sure a I'm gonna apologize for anything I say. That's not who I am, ask my mother. People just are so uptight anymore. We're so, we, we just, we're ruining our lives. We're talking about things all the time. We're so sensitive, bullying, bullying, bullying. Come on, everybody's been bullied. You know that, you know that. If I asked each and every one of you tonight as you left here, have you ever had a day that you felt picked on or bullied? Do you know what each and every one of you would tell me? A story. And you know what I would say as your new best 3 a.m. friend? Get the hell that's what I would tell you. <laughs> Happiness is a choice because we have all had those days. I'm 100% Sicilian. You don't even know bullying until you grow up in an ethnic family. Okay? Whatever was your flaw in our house was your nickname. <laughs> I got a brother, he's got a crooked eye. He's Uncle Cockeye to my son to this day. You understand? It made us tough. That way when you went to school and someone tried to pick on you, you'd be like, that's nothing. You should come home and see what Nona said to me at dinner last night. I remember people go, when, when did you become a comic? I'll tell you, seventh grade, that was the first day, I knew it. Came home, there was a note on my pillow, it said, you're a big nose freak, love dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when I get upset with my cousin, I tell you, she, she's not dumb, she just doesn't pay attention to things. She's oblivious, I'm, I'm not oblivious, I watch everything, I should have been a detective. I watch everybody's behavior, because as an observationist, you can tell when people are crazy. It's easier, that crazy just doesn't fucking sneak right up on you. <laughs> Especially women, you can tell if a woman is crazy. Easy, watch it. Men, you should never ever say, oh, my ex went crazy. Nope, she was crazy when you met her, you just wanted to sleep her. <laughs> That's it. That's it. She didn't go crazy, she lives in crazy. You could tell if a woman's crazy. Want some hints? I'll tell you, you see a white woman over 40 with a flower in her hair and you're not in Hawaii, crazy shit's about to go down. You should duck and cover because that vagina is a black hole of neediness right there. You will never fulfill that woman, ever. Not enough attention in the world. Women are easy to tell if they're crazy. You could tell if a woman's crazy in direct proportion to her eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, the thinner the eyebrow, the crazier the broad. <laughs> My mother-in-law shaves hers off and draws them back on and she's Planet Bananas, okay? <laughs> that joke deserves a way better response. <laughs> But see, some of you are sitting there trying to figure out how thick or thin your eyebrows are. <laughs> your men are giving me hostage signals. <laughs> so much.
much fun. You find the funny. She did not pay attention. My cousin did not pay attention to things. After 17 years of marriage, her husband texted her that he wanted a divorce. Texted her. She was hysterical. She'd come up, she goes, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I said, pretend you didn't get it. That's what you're gonna do. <laughs> what are you, new? Get out of here. Stupid. It was a cliche, okay? It's a very, it's a cliche. He cheated on her, right? I understand people cheat. I'm not an idiot. It's the way of the world. People cheat. I get it. I think the internet was meant to trip you guys up. Well, I grew up with all boys. I'm in a male-dominated industry, and I'm going to tell you something that is very on point. And fellas, I need you to listen. And if you're with your man, don't worry about it. I don't want him. I barely want the one I got. Okay? So <laughs> yours is safe from me. Uh, four out of five women do not want a picture of your penis. People cheat. Man, I, I, was sh I saw Larry King on TV talking about how he cheated on his wife. Did you even know Larry King was still alive? <laughs> <laughs> I saw him on TV, I just thought it was like Weekend at Bernie's. How you doing? <laughs> well, I'm Larry King. <laughs> I'm never gonna be on his show, I don't care. He cheated on his seventh wife. Seventh! I'm sure it was all her fault. Um, she's 36 years younger than him, okay? She was a former beauty queen. And you know that that young girl married that old man because she loves him. Please, right? Like, to the, you know that's ridiculous. No one has ever been sexually attracted to the eagle from the Muppets, okay? Can we be honest? That's ridiculous, I'm supposed to believe that. But here's where it all comes clear. When you find the funny, that means you gotta look past what the initial story is. Here's the, here's the real story. Here's the funny part of the story. You know who he cheated on her with? And here, watch. Also the difference here between men and women. This is why we'll never be equal, right here in this very next sentence. You wanna see why men and women will never be equal? You know who he cheated on her with? Her sister. Oh. Right, women are like, oh my God, that's horrible. Oh, what a betrayal. Men are like, holy shit, Larry got sisters. <laughs> <laughs> They'd like to say it, some of it are saying in their heads because they're afraid of you because they're afraid you're gonna punch them in the dick while they sleep. <laughs> Because that's what women do. We can only be cool for so long. We wait like three weeks later after you piss us off because we still want to seem like we're cool. Wake up in the middle of the night, remember the stupid sh you said, and punch you in the d And then pretend we're having a nightmare. Jason was chasing me! Oh my God, Jason was chasing me. You should hold me. I'm so not girly. Even my girl impersonation sounds like a gay man. Um, <laughs> oh, God. My cousin, uh, that, that whole thing opened up because Larry King, I, I gotta tell you, I was thinking about that Larry King thing and it's, he cheated on her with her sister. Now, when you find the funny, you have to understand that was just a plot to kill him, <laughs> right? Because she took him back after he cheated on her with her sister. So you know that that was really just her saying to her sister, listen, if you really need a new car and a vacation, I got a plan. Because <laughs> she thought that her sister could give him a heart attack and then she could get a better house. And she took him back. That's how I know it was a plot to kill him. Because no woman would take a man back who cheated on her with her very own sister. That was a plot to kill him because she was tired of having sex with that old man. That young 36-year-old beauty queen was tired of having sex with that old man. Having sex with Larry King would be like banging a bucket of chicken. <laughs> it's all brittle and the bones break and the skin is falling off. <laughs> 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 
You can't get the grease off your fingers. <laughs> you want to be a gold digger, there's your life. You get education, you can have sex with who you want. That should be the slogan for the literacy campaign, but no one calls me. You just call me. Call me. Please. You know, I met my husband and I fell in love with him. I mean, and I'm just gonna tell you, I love, love, love my husband. I'm not embarrassed to tell you. I love that man, right? And I only tell you that because the sh** I'm about to say. <laughs> yes! Mm, just because you love someone doesn't mean you don't see him exactly who they are. Because on paper, if you set us up, we're a perfect match. I told you, I'm 100% Sicilian. He's first generation Italian boy from Brooklyn. Right? We, we're, like, we should be perfect, but we're not. Because you wanna know why? He is the nicest guy on the planet. He has the hope of a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> right? He believes everything is possible. And it is my job as a good wife to crush that spirit. <laughs> you are never gonna be a 47-year-old American Idol contestant. Get that shit right out of your head. On paper, we're a perfect match. Real life, not so much. Didn't matter when we were dating that he's messy and I'm clean. Crazy clean, admittedly. I have a problem, I'm OCD. I watch hoarders and clean during commercials. Cause I'm afraid a dead goat's gonna fall through the television under 22 years worth of newspapers and I will just burn the house down. That's what I will do. I hate it. That's a very Italian thing to be clean. My grandmother was crazy clean. Wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, come back, your bed would be made. <laughs> She'd be at you, you messy. You and the cockeye, so messy. Grazie, so mess. It's 2.30 in the morning, woman. I know, you hungry? <laughs> yeah, I could eat, I could eat, whatever. <laughs> We're just different in real life. It didn't matter when we were dating. It didn't matter that I have a master's degree and he has a GED. Not just a GED, he's got two because he sent away for an extra copy. Because it's a double major. It only matters now because I, I, we have our kid. Our son is four years old, right? I want to send him to preschool. My husband goes, what do you want to do that for? For that, right there. How about that? <laughs> Exhibit A, huh? I gotta put a little purple barrette up here? What do you want? How am I gonna stake my case? It's insane. We're, you know, and it, if you find the funny, trust me and believe me that it will find you. Because when I go to sign my four year old for preschool, I happen to find the one preschool in our area that not only do you have to fill out an application, you have to write an essay. To get a child into preschool, an essay. And I'm gonna tell you something. If my essay can't get my son into that preschool, I will get an essay. I will get a Mexican gang member <laughs> to terrorize that school board. This four-year-old is getting into that school. I took it way too seriously. I was a student for too long. I wanted to write this beautiful essay. I got so nervous, the deadline was coming up. My husband goes, I'll write it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> not only will he not get in, we'll lose custody. <laughs> it's not happening. Now that doesn't mean he's stupid, okay? Can I tell you that? He's not stupid, he has a lot of useless information which is what we've now have become this culture of useless information. He watches all those shows like on TLC and Discovery and he watches like uh, Amish Mafia. Have you ever seen this show? That's a crock of shit show, you should know. As an Italian American, I'm gonna tell you, they do not have a mafia. We don't have a mafia. They for shit sure do not have a mafia, okay? Listen to me, the Amish people could not even be effective as a mob. They couldn't. How could they send a warning to you? If you go against the mob and they need to send you a warning, they can't cut off a horse's head and leave it in your bed. 
then they'd have no ride home. <laughs> Stupid. Take your bonnet and shove it up your ass. Really, that's, that's when you wish you could say that to your boss. <laughs> just for, no, there's never an occasion to say, take your bonnet and shove it up your ass. And I just made one, so there you go. I don't know, he has a lot of useless, that's really what marriage is. Marriage is where one person's useless information seeps into your head and makes you dumber than you've ever been. Here's a perfect example, one night I was asleep, dead asleep. I wake up, I'm choking, I'm like. <coughs> <coughs> he wakes up, he looks at me, he goes, what's wrong? <clears throat> I'm choking. He said, maybe you ate a spider. wrong with you <laughs> he said I was watching the Discovery Channel <laughs> and the average person eats about eight spiders a year in their sleep you're an asshole <laughs> really cuz I can't sleep I don't know if I'm on spider one or spider eight I gotta sleep with a nicotine pouch over my mouth. I'm punching him in the dick, cause if I gotta be awake, he's gotta be awake. I'm laying there thinking, what kind of sick sadist scientist is doing the research watching seven spiders crawl in someone's mouth, and I'm flicking out the eighth. <laughs> and I'm happy. I am happy, cause I don't believe in divorce, I believe in disappearance. So, <laughs> I know I'm happy. Just happy. I love him. I know I do, because I put up with his mother. <laughs> Listen, you want to get married, you forget about that. You forget about the family, right? Because even Charles Manson had a family. You never forget about with the family. I'm not telling you that my mother-in-law is difficult, but the Pope would stab her with his hat, okay? <laughs> it's not a coincidence that she and her card club went to the Vatican two weeks prior to the other one quitting. <laughs> He probably went, this shit is too much for eternal salvation. <laughs> There's an intimacy when you're married. An intimacy. I, I can only, I can't tell you about it. I can only share with you a situation where the intimacy came out that no one told me about. The other day, my husband walked in the house like this. I said, honey, what's wrong? He said, I gambled and I lost. He <laughs> his pants is what happened. <laughs> You see, that's an intimacy I would not be privy to if we just lived together. Because when you live with someone and you shit yourself, it's better you come home with no pants at all. You're like, I don't know what the hell happened. I thought I had them on. Because that then puts the onus on the other person. They then have to ask themselves, if I ask the question, will I be happy with the answer I receive? What am I supposed to do now that we're married? What am I gonna do, get a divorce? How, how am I supposed to do it? Well, we'll go to the attorney and go, ma'am, what's, what's the problem? Why do you want a divorce? Do you not love your husband anymore? No, nope, I love him very much. Uh, did, did he cheat on you? Nope, that didn't happen at all. Oh, what? He <laughs> himself. <laughs> okay, and I do the laundry. Now, like, I don't, does that work? Yeah, they're poop jokes, but poop jokes are funny, who cares? We all do it, you never <laughs> yourself before? Get out of here. We've all been, in the middle of the winter with a cold and a sneeze and a true and oh my God. Throw <laughs> a woman on myself at the mall. And you gotta throw your underwear away in the bathroom. <laughs> That's real. That's real, see if J-Lo sings about that on her next song. <laughs> you find the funny, it's there. I'm telling you, it's there. You just gotta know where to look for it, you understand? I, I'm tired sometimes. That's why I gotta teach other people to do it because sometimes I'm too tired to look for it anymore. I'm tired all the time. I get grumpy. My husband said to me, he goes, you're like two different women. Sometimes you're nice, sometimes you're mean. Two different women. Go, well, aren't you lucky? It's a threesome for you every night. <laughs> Menage a mommy, huh? I'm not the only woman tired with a career and a kid and all that stuff because that's why those books, Fifty Shades of Grey, were popular. Because the main character ties the woman up. 
And while you're tied up, you don't have to do the laundry, the dishes, you don't have to drive anyone anywhere. <laughs> It's behind the milk! <laughs> Move the milk! I just bought it on Tuesday! <laughs> so much fun. I'm tired. I know I'm tired because I used to watch all those polygamous documentaries. <laughs> right? I used to watch them and like with the... the just with so much energy and verve and, and get mad. Cause I, I mean, I get, you know, I think you understand, like I'm a strong woman. Like I, I get mad at those women. How come you don't respect yourself? What is wrong with you? You don't respect yourself. You're gonna take an eighth of a man. That's what you will settle for out of your life. Now I watch those shows. I'm like, holy shit, I need a wife. <laughs> what? You mean one broad cooks while the other one cleans? Someone watches the kids, I get sex every third night. The rest of the time I sleep in the bed in the shape of an ex? Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> Jeez. That is a healthcare plan. You cannot teach these little girls to be princesses. That will not help them in life. You can teach them to respect themselves, but a princess is not what you want them to be. A princess has, right? Okay? That's, it's ridiculous. That's, a princess has the connotation that they're better than the average person, the upper echelon. So then when princess gets asked out to dinner by Georgie the garbage man, she's not gonna wanna go because George is just a garbage man, when really he has a government job with holidays and benefits. <laughs> right? <laughs> She'll be living at home with you asking for hair extension money. That's what's gonna happen. That's how it's gonna work. Plus, we're not raising little boys to be princes. Parents of boys are not, they're not princes. That's a whole different connotation too. That's assless chaps and a lot of purple. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> really. I don't like the princess thing. There's only so many princes in the world for a princess to marry. And they make a big deal every time one gets married. They made a big deal when uh, the one in England got married and they said, isn't it wonderful that Prince William married a commoner? That woman is not a commoner. Did you see the wedding? They sat there. Her family sat there stoically. They didn't cry. They... I'm a commoner. If I'd have married the future king of England, Shit one went down a little bit differently. <laughs> they would have treated it like a tailgating party. My father would have been there with a rainbow wig and a John 316 sign. <laughs> My mother would have started the wave and made out with the priest. My brothers would have had those big foam, we're number one. <laughs> My uncles, who I wouldn't have been able to, to invite into the wedding, like the Duchess of York, like they'd had to stay out in the parking lot. They'd have been frying up dogs and bootlegging t-shirts. If you want to be queen, you got to kneel before the king. <laughs> oh, ask the no-tooth hooker about that. I don't know, I don't. <laughs> you laugh and you learn when you find the funny. I don't know. I'll, what I went through to have my son, and I don't mean physically, none of that stuff. I just mean to keep my job. I've been a comic. When I was pregnant with him, I'd been a comic for 14 years at that point. When everybody found out I was pregnant, they were like, oh my God, what are you going to do? Well, what do you mean? Well, never forget to take my birth control pill again. What do you mean? <laughs> they didn't know what to do with me, because most female comedians, their wives have their babies for them, right? So no one knew. <laughs> just is what it is. It is what it is. Those are my colleagues and friends, so, and I support it. But I just, no one knew what to do with me. My agent goes, well, guess your career's over. <laughs> what was this, just a ruse to get a man? All this? <laughs> he goes, well, I never saw a pregnant woman on stage. Well, apparently never been to a really bad strip club. <laughs> just a two-for-one dance is all that is. That's all that is. <laughs> oh, 
so much fun. Every day something's crazy. Every day, you find the funny. I'm telling you, you just gotta pay attention. The problem is, is we don't pay attention. We're so self-absorbed, we don't listen to other people even, right? Guy came up to me after the show. He said, I saw you on YouTube, remember me? <laughs> I got his number in case my cousin's line is busy, because you just never... <laughs> It's always good to have a dummy on backup. <laughs> you find the funny. And I can only tell you how to help you do it. I can only help you to find the funny because it's happened to me. It's happened to me. I was publicly humiliated once that I didn't know how I was gonna get out of bed. I was supposed to be on the second season of Dancing with the Stars. At least that's what I thought. No one was watching that show. It was not popular then. Two days before I was supposed to start rehearsal, I got a phone call. They said, Tammy, we're sorry, but we're going in a different direction. So I got GPS, where are you going? I will follow you. <laughs> I will stalk you like Sacagawea with MapQuest. Where are you going? <laughs> Started shaving my eyebrows and getting a wig. <laughs> they stunt casting, because Hollywood is flaky. You know who they chose over me? Heather Mills McCartney. Yes, that's why that show became popular. Because Heather Mills, you know who she is? She used to be married to a beetle. She's an amputee. You don't even know a bad day at work till you've been replaced on a dancing show by a one-legged broad, okay? <laughs> you gotta start finding the funny fast. <laughs> Tried to choke myself to death. That doesn't work, you pass out and your hands fall off your throat. <laughs> and you breathe and suck at two things. <laughs> That's my favorite joke. If you get that great, if you don't, put your head down and rest, because that is the delineating line joke. Since when did society get to tell you what to do with a kid? I didn't know that. I had my kid, I had never told anybody what to do with their kid. Within an hour of coming home from the hospital, I received four phone calls from a Nazi breastfeeding organization <laughs> that found out I was gonna give my son a bottle. I said, what do you people want? The lady goes, we'd like to come over and nurse your baby. I said, my baby's fine, but my husband could use some attention. I'm tired and I see how this works out. And he doesn't want to let any of them go to waste. <laughs> it was a long time ago, it's all right. People tell you what to do with, that's what, to do with your kids. I don't know why people tell you what to do with the kid. We're ruining kids. I signed my son up for t-ball. All I ever wanted was a little boy to play sports. They don't even keep score at t-ball anymore. Because everybody's a winner. Not really. Look around, some people are losers, <laughs> innately. And if you don't teach your kid how to lose and figure out a way to come back and win, then he's gonna live with you in his underwear and cowboy boots behind the screen door for the rest of his goddamn life. <laughs> Crazy. There's no incentive for success anymore. Sports is over. I told you, I'm a daughter of a former pro football player I am so sad for sports. You can thank Southern California. It's over 10 years, no more sports. Because they just passed a law, every kid who tries out for a sports team in Southern California automatically makes the team. Really? Then who the hell is in the band? <laughs> That's how you get the band. That is how you get the band. No one wants to play the tuba. There is no Justin Bieber tuba player to inspire kids. Just a big, slow chooch who can't get off the line fast enough. They're like, hey, you wanna be on the field? Put these white boots on and carry this horn. Let's go march, tusk, tusk. It's a matter of hitting a little too close to home for some of you. <laughs> Suck it up. Crazy. You find the funny, it's there. Every day, every day something. I was in Florida, a woman got eaten by an alligator. Nothing funny about that. <laughs> at first. <laughs> this woman was a jogger, and they believed that she was jogging this canal where this gator lived. Well, duh. I'm not even from Florida. I know if it rains and there's a puddle, probably a gator, <laughs> right? I get off the plane and start running in a zigzag formation at the airport. <laughs> Some more useless information from the Discovery Channel. 
She was a jogger. They believe two weeks prior to eating her, this gator actually jumped up out of the canal and nipped her on the ankle. Nipped her on the ankle, yet she continued to jog the canal. What the hell is wrong with you? What more would a gator need to do to keep you out of his yard? And he had to eat her because he was getting shit from his gator boys. Every day she showed up post-nip, they're like, what are you gonna do, gum her like the no-tooth hooker? <laughs> you find the funny, it's there. <laughs>